Hey guys, it's Bishop Chelsea here and welcome to episode 5 of the Local to Global series here with the Canadian Wrestling Coalition. Now as you can tell by today's title, I have been doing a little bit of research in regards to sort of Local to Global or more so the, the Road to Glory challenges and the way that you need to book these 0000 companies, which is obviously zero prestige. Zero momentum, zero uh, popularity, and zero finance. Now, it seems like a good strategy that we probably should have gone with to, you know, begin the series would be for us to change our ticket prices. Now, at the moment, we're on normal. Uh, and as you can see, there's no pros or cons to using the standard, standard ticket prices. As you can see down here, this is how much money you actually make Per event ticket obviously TV and house show they're a little bit different um, so realistically we're right now at five popularity so we would in theory be making eight dollars per ticket sold and of course we were expecting well if we go to history here our last show got 55 attendance now the strategy is when you're this small of a company to forego making your fans pay for your events. And the theory of that is, if I show you here, we go to free, you don't charge for entry, and it allows you to build up a much larger crowd than normal, obviously sacrificing all your ticket revenue. The show is free, um, the crowd will be more tolerant of bad matches and angles, and the attendance boost depends on how popular the company is and how attractive the show is using this pricing boosts your potential popularity gains so in theory you can skyrocket your popularity gains by having no fans now obviously this would have been probably a much better strategy to implement right at the beginning because it would have been i think in theory gaining about a point of popularity probably for every show Obviously, we're, we're implementing it now, so that's fine. We're only, this is our fifth episode in the series. And realistically, we're actually doing pretty well, I think, anyway. Obviously, there was a whole debacle with last episode and the two shows that we didn't actually gain any popularity for. But I think changing this, we are hopefully going to see a massive difference in popularity. So let's run our first show. We're at 5 Pop in Ontario. And I'm kind of hoping that after this one show, we will hopefully go up to six pop and then seven pop after the show after that. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. Again, we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see if that's actually going to happen. Every two shows for a popularity increase, that would be pretty incredible. And of course, we are trying to essentially get to tiny size as soon as possible, which in 2016 terms would be small size, but obviously it now goes uh, tiny or insignificant, tiny, small, medium, big, large, etc. Whereas it used to be obviously local, small, regional. I feel like I'm missing one in there. No, I think I'm right. Yeah, local, small, regional, cult national international global yeah i think that's right anyway doesn't matter too much but we want to get these popularity increases because we're not going to make enough money otherwise and with the popularity hopefully what will happen is the sponsorship will obviously go up a lot and if we're struggling for money which we shouldn't be going in towards the the end of the year uh, what we can do is just start charging people uh, for ticket prices, go back to normal, and in theory, we would, you know, essentially be making uh, a relatively big amount of ticket revenue once we do decide to go back to normal. Uh, obviously, there are a few other ones you could go with in between. Uh, so obviously, you can go very cheap. You can go to cheap. Uh, and if we go here, the so very cheap, obviously, you do get a little bit of money, and then cheap's obviously a little bit higher. Um, and then obviously normal, 
could go premium if we're if we're desperate for money i'll go premium but i don't really want to be doing that and i want to try and stay on free tickets at least until we get past tiny size that's the that's the game plan it's kind of the new strategy that we're taking all right all right, we got some more incidents here. Um, actually, one other thing I do want to show you is our backstage rating. And we've got another small negative impact there on our boy Murray. Uh, so let me go back here. Let's have a look at backstage. As you can see, it is currently dreadful. We are in red. It is at 32%. And that is a toxic backstage environment. As you can see, uh, a lot of these people here they're not actually negative influences, but they currently have morale issues. Hence why they're now sort of mild, mild negative influences. And of course, that is Americana, Gregory Chapman, and Jason Van Pelt. Now, the rest of them, uh, actually, I'm not sure about Spencer. He says mildly negative as well, and he is also on here with morale issues. So he might not actually be a proper negative influence. Uh, but the rest are. So yeah, Virgil, Murray, Marcel, they're all really bad. And apart from Marcel, I think we'll probably be getting rid of both Virgil and Murray as soon as possible, realistically. All right, so let's book. We're expecting 86 fans. So that's obviously a lot more than we've been getting recently. And of course, that is because we are now running our shows free of charge. Like I said, it's going to be really interesting to see what the popularity increase is going to be like now. Anyway, tonight's main event, uh, it's going to be a non-title match between Van Pelt and Marcel. We are then going to go with, I think, Kamikaze against Spencer. Have we done this match already? We have not. Are they... I guess they're involved in a tag team. What are their tag teams? Oh, interesting. Erin Gray. Okay. So that's obviously a woman. And at the moment, we obviously don't have a women's division. And obviously, ACPW, uh, they actually use women integrated into their company so i don't think we want to do that i like to have things separated for the for the most part anyway uh, so we'll make this our storytelling match and then let's go in and do one last match let's do our crusher versus canada match or crusher versus captain match of course i said in the last episode we were gonna have a best of three series and at the moment crusher is one nil up in the series so there we go captain canada gonna get a, a little bit back a little bit back i think we'll put that match there i don't want this match to be the storytelling it kind of just works better i think let's make that regular actually let's make that work the crowd and uh we don't actually need an angle well, we don't need two angles. Let's go with Marcel and Jason Van Pelt. Give them both success. Advance the title storyline as well. And there we go. That'll go before there. And let's run the show. All right, so we start off with a 35 rated match where we have Kamikaze defeating Spencer Edmund in 11.37. By pinfall with a reverse 450 splash. That 35 is pretty good. Kamikaze with a 44 in ring performance. We always know this match is going to be pretty bad, uh, but it gets a 22 here. And we have Captain Canada getting some revenge, defeating Canadian Crusher in 12 29 by submission with a Montreal Crab. <laughs> and of course, yeah, it now goes to one a one victory apiece with the decider to be decided. 
at the uh we might do that at the pay-per-view maybe not anyway we then move into a 44 rated angle where we have marcel cutting a scathing promo onto jason van pelt and as you can see once again using the freedom to improvise his dialogue to his advantage and the main event does pretty well getting us a 43 rating where we have marcel lefleur Defeating Jason Van Pelt in 1950 by submission with a Parisian chicken wing. Yeah, good match. Let's finish the show. We get a 40 overall show rating. Uh, of course, increasing our popularity there in Ontario as well. And like I said, I'm, I'm just really curious. The whole popularity thing for this series so far has just got me a little bit freaked out. Like, I'm just... I'm not really too sure what's going on. Anyway, we've also got Captain Canada dating somebody from outside the wrestling industry. Let's have a look. There we go. We're up to six. I think we've worked it out. Let's see. I'll, let's do the next show as well. I want to see if we go up to seven. That would be absolutely crazy. Crazy. If we somehow, you know, go up to seven and it's increasing by one point per show. Yeah, that, that would be a bit of a shock. Kind of a, a pleasant surprise, to be honest. But it would, it would kind of actually frustrate me a little bit, considering we could be in a, a much better position if that is the case. Anyway... I'm sure we'll find out after this next show. Like I said, if it's two shows for one point of popularity, that's ridiculously good as well. So we'll take that if that's the case. But if it is literally one show per point, yeah, it's hopefully going to speed things up a lot. I'm enjoying the challenge of the local to global. I really am. But I feel like it's it, it's obviously interesting because it's such a grind at the moment. Uh, what have we got? What issues do we have? Oh, we have a... Probably a notice. Oh, pay rise request. Uh, he wants 100. He wants a 70 raise. That's probably with his uh, ACPW contract. We'll give him, we have to, we pretty much have to give him 75%. Otherwise <laughs> we'll probably lose him. And I don't really want to lose Americana at this stage. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, how did we have ticket sales? We already ran a couple of shows this month, haven't we? Yeah. Cause we're up to the, essentially what is the go home show for our big pay-per-view for the month of April. Interesting stuff. We are progressing through the year quite quickly. So that, it's good. But obviously the financial situation has me a little bit worried. Anyway, all three of our negative influences doing some work here. Uh, Murray's just getting worse and worse. Another small negative impact. And then luckily Marcel's not doing anything too bad. I guess we may as well try and rib people. Or should we maybe do like an open forum? Probably shouldn't do that. Let's do a rib. We want to... We want to try and get that backstage rating up a little bit. Alright. And let's book. So I did... Uh, I guess we could keep it for the pay-per-view. Let's let's keep it for the pay-per-view. So what we'll do for this one, let's have Canadian Crusher take on Murray. And we'll give Crusher a victory there. Just want to build him up a little bit before the pay-per-view. And then let's book in Captain Canada as well to take on Virgil. 
Because like I said, these guys are these guys are going soon. I'm really just not too worried about them. They're going to be replaced by much better workers. And then I guess I mean, part of me wants let's do a tag team main event. Let's do it. I know I know last episode I didn't do it. Let's go with Tofa and Americana to take on Kamikaze and Taylor Kid. Yeah, so that'll go for 20 minutes. Uh, we'll give the victory to Americana. Thing is, we're now paying him a lot more money than we were previously. And there we go. Okay. So our angle, I guess we'll just go with Tofa and Americana. Might want to script this one, I think. Let's just go with them, and we'll advance the storyline here as well. Give them a bit of success there as well. We'll probably help out with the momentum in the future. Let's also make this the work the crowd match, and of course, the crusher match will be our storytelling. Alright, there we go. What is essentially the go-home show? That's a bad match. <laughs> I think that's our first ever red match that we've had in the series so far. We get a 19 for our opening bout, but we have Captain Canada defeating Virgil Voss in 12.30 by submission with a Montreal Crab, and the bout dragged in the middle with a lack of flow being noticeable. That's an intro. Okay, we get another 19. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> no, we're literally putting jobbers against jobbers. Uh, but these matches don't really matter too much. It's more just the main event. But yeah, back-to-back -back 19s. And we've got Canadian Crusher defeating Murray Firth in just under 12 minutes by pinfall with a full Nelson Slam. Yeah, Murray Firth picking up a 17 in ring performance. He's, uh, he's great. In case you hadn't noticed, he's really good. All right, we then go into a 40 rated angle with Tofa and Americana prior to the main event. And the main event does really, really well, getting us a 45, which is probably one of our best matches we've had, I think. I think we got a 46. Actually, we, we got a 47, I think, in the last episode. Yeah. Anyway, we've got Tofa Smith and Americana Jr. defeating Kamikaze and Taylor Kidd in 2020, when Americana pinned Taylor Kidd with an American crush. Yeah, I mean, Tofu was also really off his game, so could have been even higher, to be honest. Uh, he picked up a 43 in-ring performance. We got Americana on a 41, and then Kamikaze there on a 42 as well. All right, so let's finish the show. Ah. Ah, okay. So we get a 37, but the show didn't result in any popularity changes. That old chestnut coming back up again. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that keeps coming up. There's, there's got to be a reason for it, but I just ha honestly have no idea why. And I guess as long as we're gaining a lot of popularity constantly we should be okay maybe it has something to do with the amount of shows we're running that might be it i don't know i honest i couldn't find anything about not gaining popularity like the only thing is i could find is stuff that i already know and of course that is you know touring shows that are you know not normal shows won't gain any popularity if they're not a certain Sort of level above. That's a really cool render there for Lasana. Uh, he looks really old in it though. Which is interesting. Alright, so... 
Ooh, we've got two people missing tonight. Uh, wasn't wasn't Kamikaze the number one contender? I'm pretty sure he was the number one contender. So that's not good. <laughs> nice. Virgil's getting even more negative as well. And luckily, Marcel is fine. Do another rib or try and do another. Let's let's go. Uh, go for a practical joke. Uh, and let's go with Tofa. Yeah, nice. So Tofa, seeing the funny side. I'm not sure if that actually increased our backstage rating. Anyway. So I'm pretty sure if we go to the history here. Uh, yeah, Kamikaze defeated Jason Van Pelt. So we currently don't have a number one contender. Interesting. Uh, I guess we could maybe go with Taylor Kidd. I mean, he's been somewhat impressive, I guess. What's his popularity? It's at a 27. That's not too bad. He's not great, though. That's the only problem. He's not very good in the ring. He's just kind of... He's better than our jobbers. But he's not as good as some of our you know, main guys, if you will. Anyway, the final match against these two competitors being Crusher and Captain. And we will give the victory to Canadian Crusher. And the winner of this match is actually going to get a title shot at the next show for the start of May. So it's going to be Crusher taking on the winner of our main event. Uh, I did do Crusher. Yep, perfect. All right, next match. Let's just go with... Who have we got left? Let's go Spencer and... Hofer, Virgil. Eh, I mean, let's just go with Virgil. I'm pretty sure they're versed each other. Yeah. Anyway, I, I just want to give Edmund a bit more... A bit more momentum. You know, he's got chilly momentum or cold momentum, I think, at the moment. So, I do like him. So, I want to bring him back up a bit. Okay. So, let's go with a Marcel Taylor Kid angle for the main event. Or prior to the main event. So, there's that one. And then, let's also go an angle for, I guess, Spencer Edmund as well. Uh, I think we'll script him just in case. Because he could be pretty bad. Uh, and again, we also want this match to be storytelling. So there we go. Alright. That is Festival of Violence. And we start off with a... It's a decent angle. 31 for Spencer Edmund. We also have 120 people at the show. Uh, but again, you know, we're not making any money from that. So it doesn't really matter too much. We then go into his match, which gets a 24, where we have Spencer Edmund defeating Virgil Voss in 11.32 by submission with an elevated Boston Crab. Uh, obviously, a lot of these matches are going to be lower than what they used to be, uh, and that is purely because of, well, number one, morale issues, and number two, the toxic backstage locker room. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, moving into the second match, we have a 20 rated match here. Our final match between Canadian Crusher and Captain Canada. And he does defeat Captain Canada in 11.38 by pinfall with a full Nelson slam. I think that's actually the worst match they've had together. So that's interesting. We then go into a 46 where we have Marcel cutting a promo onto his title opponent tonight in Taylor Kidd. Uh, once again, doing well, you know, not being scripted. So happy to see that he's still, you know, doing pretty well, 46. And again, he does have morale issues. So that's not a great main event though. We get a 33 for our main event and we have Marcel Lafleur defeating Taylor Kidd in 1954 by submission with a Parisian chicken wing. 
And we have Marcel making defense number three of the CWC world title. I don't think that's going to be a popularity increase. And it is not. We get a 33 overall show rating. I'm kind of racking my brain now where we're not in a good position. We are really in a bad position without, you know, gaining this popularity. And we're also not making any money at the moment. So our finances are going to be getting worse and worse every month. All right, let's go for Marcel. Let's go for Gregory Chapman. That's in, that's important for our referee to no longer have any issues. And let's go for, for Spencer as well. All right. I mean, hopefully, like I said, we can work some of these morale issues out. I mean, literally having the referee with morale issues is, I think, probably another penalty for every match as well. So that's got me scared. Really scared, actually. Um, we're going to have to start running some really good shows. Otherwise, we're not going to be gaining any pop. So it's as simple as that, really. Let's, uh, let's advance one day and see how much we lost for the month. Yeah, it's it's not looking good. It's it's it is really becoming quite a challenge. Maybe I should have just instead of hiring, you know, the, the actual local workers that can work here without having to pay travel cover, I should have just gone for essentially the best backstage influences that I probably could have gotten because this is like gotten out of hand very very quickly, and now. Now there are more people on the list. We've got Kamikaze in there now as well. Taylor Kidd in there as well. And it's down to a 25. Yeah. And basically, it, even at this stage, if I was to bring in anybody else, they would essentially just be upset anyway. <laughs> because of the, the way the, the you know, backstage rating is at the moment. So I've got some I've got some work to do. We've really got some work to do on this series at the moment. Uh, also, I forgot to mention this in the last episode. Uh, I checked at the end of the last episode. Uh, off camera, unfortunately. But BMCW actually declared war on us. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, of course, I think back in episode two, we actually went hostile towards them. And uh, they were the ones who declare war. So, yeah, that was pretty cool, actually. It's a cool thing to see. Uh, obviously, in theory, it's not that great. Uh, and if we have a look at them as well, uh, at the moment, they are smashing it. They're running mo one monthly event. Uh, and as you can see, their, uh, their shows are pretty good. 51 for their first show. Uh, they then had a 53, another 53 for March. And then, yeah, for this month, they've actually got a 54, their best show ever. And as you can see, the amount of money they have, I mean, they're down to 70,000 from 100. Uh, they're really hiring some good people and doing some good stuff with those people. Uh, what's this? Can we see their size? They've only got one popularity, so there you go. And in theory, they're, they're going to run out of money very quickly. Anyway, like I said, we're going to pump them full of money anyway, just to, to make sure they survive. But at the moment, I think I'm kind of more worried about us actually surviving. Uh, and what I'm not going to do is pump money into here because this would be cheating. I don't want to cheat the local to global. Anyway, let's, let's get into the next show. I think at this point we might just get a bit boring with it. And we're just going to run a title match on every single show with our best workers. Because we, we literally need to be getting, you know, those solid main events that are going to push us to actually get popularity. Otherwise, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to be closed due to bankruptcy. So, as you can tell, I'm pretty worried about it at the moment. And the backstage rating has 
definitely spiraled out of control. I really should have gotten rid of these negative influences to begin with. Now, Canadian Crusher. All right, hopefully that'll get Virgil out of here. Uh, who's not here tonight? Van Pelt. All right. Anyway, let's let's just book the show. Like I said, we're just going to go for a title match. I guess we will. Do I want to give Crusher a vic uh Yeah, we may as well. I, I said I was going to do it, so let's do Marcel Lafleur taking on Crusher. Uh, obviously, it's not, not going to be a good match by any stretch of the imagination. But I did say that I was going to do it, so I kind of feel like we need to. We we essentially did the whole, you know, best of three series between the, the two Canadian, or well, the two people that have Canada in their name. So there we go. And we can't even do a 20-minute match. Can we do a 16-minute match, please? Really? Okay. I'm, sh I'm sh gonna strip him of his title match because he's an idiot. <laughs> There's nothing else I can really say. You know, he's a backstage problem for us now. Uh, I mean, let's just go for Topher. They've both got the same popularity, so. And I think at the moment, we, we don't actually get any penalties for repetitive booking. So, I mean, we could essentially just run with this match every show. Be very boring for you guys to watch, but at this point, I think surviving is kind of the the more pressing issue. It's good to see that uh, Marcel's been improving. Uh, what about Tofa? He's been improving as well. He's up to a 78, so... A little bit of psychology on him as well there. What about the psychology? Yeah, so he's got two points in uh, Marcel. That's good. All right. Yeah, we definitely need the title on the line there as well. Okay, next match, let's go with Kamikaze and Captain Canada. I mean, we're doing this match again as well. Not really necessary, but there we go. Obviously, Kamikaze did take a loss in that tag team match. A little bit earlier. Let's also give Taylor Kidd a victory. And he can verse Virgil. I think Virgil's probably going to hand in his notice soon. Because he's got big morale issues. I guess him and Murray both have big morale issues. Uh, but we, yeah, we just um, upset him even more. So, yeah, it makes sense. Anyway, what I am going to do is make this the storytelling match. I think I'm going to use my character again for angles. So what we're going to do is go with Americana. And then Alexander Robinson is going to be with Kamikaze. Uh, we'll do unscripted. We'll do unscripted for now. Uh, I'm not sure, even sure if they're in the same angle, but that's fine. Uh, the main event angle will be Marcel and Topher. Let's go both of them not scripted. See how that does. Uh, and again, I guess we'll do success for both of them as well. So that one will go before the main event. Other one can be to begin the show. And we are ready to go. All right. All right, so we start off with a 50 rated angle. So that's pretty good. Again, Alexander Robinson, he's he's really good. He's got the, got the overness. And of course, Kamikaze hopefully will be helped out in this angle, getting a little bit, hopefully a little bit of popularity towards him. Uh, of course, Americana, not exactly a great road agent. We then go into a 25 rated match where we have Kamikaze defeating Captain Canada in 11.49 by pinfall with a reverse 450 splash. Kamikaze really off his game. I mean, it hurt the rating of the match. Uh, we then go into a 26, where we have Taylor Kidd defeating Virgil Voss in 12-10. Wipe him four with a 450 degree splash. And yeah, apparently these two have great chemistry. And it showed in their performance. 
That's not good. Okay, we then go into a 28 rated angle where we have Marcel cutting a promo on, well, I think a promo, yeah, with Taylor Kidd. And as you can see, Taylor did not do well without a script. So that's a bit frustrating. And again, Marcel putting in work with his unscripted promos. And the main event, why did I do Taylor Kidd? I'm not too sure. It was going to be Topher Smith, but I guess it will kind of work because Taylor was in the previous match. And of course, uh, Marcel was probably just bragging about the fact that he beat him at the pay-per-view just recently. Uh, but the main event does really well, getting us a 43, which is much needed. And we have Marcel Lefleur defeating Topher Smith in 1953 by submission with a Parisian chicken wing. And we have Marcel making defense number four of the CWC world title. All right, so we end the show. We once again get a 40 overall show rating, which increases our popularity in one region. But again, we're in the first week of May. So I'm kind of thinking it might be a possibility because sometimes our popularity increased with a 32. So I don't understand that. But it seems like we're running too many shows for our size. And, oh, that's not good. And as such, he's annoyed at the toxic backstage atmosphere. He is the reason why it's toxic. God damn it, Marcel. He's just... What a pain in the ass. Anyway, we have actually got up to seven popularity. So we are essentially gaining one point of popularity for each increase we get. So I was correct about saying that. We just need to make sure we get the increases for each show that we do. Which, you know, seems to be kind of a... I don't know. A, a thing that doesn't happen. And I mean, every show that we don't increase, we're essentially just wasting money for running the show and paying wages. I mean, what I could do is maybe just run three monthly events per month and do it that way. I mean, that, that could be a good idea because it literally looks like we're only getting three increases per month, no matter what. And I, I still don't know why. I still don't know why. Uh, now we've got some pay rise requests, so it's getting even worse. Uh, Van Pelt wants 120 per appearance. I mean, we'll give him 60, and I guess, yeah, I mean, he wants 60, so we'll give him 45 in Marcel. It's not looking good. I think we're going to have to start looking for some more workers, to be honest. Because at the moment, I mean... Uh, so I can work in Canada, uh, based in... Uh, we essentially need either Ontario or Quebec because they're, that's great. Uh, let's go any age, I suppose. Uh, but no one's cheap. That's the problem. None of these guys are cheap. Uh, and even if we got Clutch McCain, who we could get, uh, he's essentially, well, he's working for BMCW, so we would have to essentially steal him away. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's have a look at Ontario. Uh, not Ontario, sorry, Quebec. I mean, we can't even get Ant-Man anymore. And everybody else is just so expensive, man. I mean, Eric LaMonica. We could get him in. Got really good psychology. Really good. Yeah, so we could get him in for 40. Uh, but I think that's it. I don't think anyone else is going to be even close to being affordable. Uh, maybe this guy. Rocco Renoir. Renoir. I think it's Renoir. 
I mean, he would also be pretty good, uh, but he's highly strong and a grifter, so he'd also probably be a negative influence backstage. Uh, we've also got Waldo Oddlaw, who is a psychopath, so 100% he would be a negative influence. And then we got this guy here, who is also an agitator. So literally pretty much everyone we would bring in is going to be a negative influence. So I, I really don't know what to do. I mean, they're all going to be negative influences anyway, because they're going to have morale issues. Because of our backstage. Which is actually getting worse and worse. Yeah, I don't really know what to do. I've never really been in this bad of a predicament before. I've always usually taken care of stuff when I needed to. In theory, like, the only thing I could really do to actually combat the whole problem would be to just get rid of everybody, run no shows, and hire a whole new roster and start fresh. I think that's what we're probably get Oh, my God. I'm thinking that's what we're probably going to have to do. Um, we're also getting worse and worse into debt. We're at... 14,000. Luckily, the sponsor money is actually going up quite a bit. But I'm, I'm worried. Big time worried. Anyway, let, let's run another show. And uh, we're going to have to have a really... I'm going to have to have a big think about what's going on. Because at the moment, I would say we're in crisis mode. Not only are we massively in debt and losing more money every show, uh, the popularity increases are strange, to say the least. At least we've kind of fixed that problem a little bit. Oh, small positive impact upon Murray. And he's now happy at the action. Okay. And our oh, Virgil's annoyed. Okay. Yeah. I literally think the only way is to start fresh. Okay, we've got a successful rib. However, it's backfired for Americana. So that's perfect. Yeah, I mean, we're up to an 85 for the wrestling industry. So that's, it's good, but we need to capitalize on it as soon as possible. Like that's the, the most important thing we can do right now. All right. All right, we've got to th I've got to think about doing something here. Basically, the people that we hire, once we start fresh and literally fire everybody, so hopefully none of you guys are too attached to anyone on our roster. I know a lot of you are probably fans of Americana. Uh, and maybe Marcel as well. I know a lot of you guys said that he was quite good. But we, we're just going to have to get rid of... Okay, may result in a penalty. For some reason, I thought that there were no penalties for this size. I guess maybe I was wrong, and now we're going to run into some, some issues. Lovely. Okay. Okay. Kamikaze, there we go. Yeah, I'm definitely worried. I'm definitely worried about a few things. And it's going to actually suck to, to lose a guy like Spencer. Yeah, he's really good. I mean, I might keep him. Maybe. I don't know, man. I feel like we almost need to keep him at this point. Just so we have at least, you know, somebody from this original roster. Anyway, at least if we get a new roster, everybody is going to be... It's up to 46 popularity in Quebec, Van Pelt. Yeah, I mean, at least we get a chance to have all new wrestlers come in. And I mean, if we're paying travel... 
we may as well just go for for some of the best and some of the best backstage rated wrestlers we can get as well and essentially if i see one negative influence i'm probably just going to fire them straight away because i don't want the same thing to happen let's go marcel and kamikaze uh let's script both of them i guess and we'll go with like that advancing the storyline uh then let's go with let's go with alexander robinson again uh so i think we'll just use uh who's better kamikaze i would just use kamikaze it really doesn't matter at this point uh and let's go jason van pelt script both of them as well book that in and uh we're ready to go let me make this the storytelling match because we don't want any any extra penalties on our match shows and let's run it so we start off with a 35 this is really bad i probably shouldn't have scripted it uh but obviously we had van pelt on entertainment so kind of needed to obviously kamikaze really bad road agent uh but that's a uh, i mean it's not good but it's it's not terrible either the first match getting a 27 there. We have Jason Van Pelt defeating Murray Firth in 12 minutes by pinfall with an axe kick. 35 in ring for Van Pelt. We then go into a 22 rated match where we have Spencer Edmund defeating Canadian Crusher in 11.51 by submission with an elevated Boston Crab. 24 for Spencer Edmund in that match. We then go to a disappointing 36 rated entertainment angle from Marcel and Kamikaze. Not looking good for this show. Hopefully this main event will save it. It kind of does. We get a 40 rated main event. Where we have Marcel Lafleur defeating Kamikaze in 20 minutes, 7 seconds by submission with a Parisian chicken wing. And we have Marcel Lafleur making defense number 5. Of the CWC world title. Alright, so we end the show. We get a 35. This is what I'm talking about. We get a 35 and it increases our popularity in one region. However, we should be increasing in popularity every show. So I don't understand why we're not doing that. Only thing I can think of is the fact that we're an in insignificant company. And we're putting out too many shows. That's the only thing I can think of. I'm going to test it again. I'm going to test it again. For this month. So we're going to finish this month. Probably not in this episode. But in the next episode. I'm probably going to record that. Sh probably not straight away actually. Uh, we got another pay rise request. This is the problem, man. This is another big problem that we're running into. Everybody wants pay rise requests because they all work for ACPW as well. Ah, okay. Let's have a look. So we're not up to eight. Okay, that's interesting. So we didn't actually get the increase despite actually increasing, if that makes sense. We didn't get the, the whole one point. So I would assume that we're very close to getting up to eight. So we will do one more show. And essentially, if my if my theory is correct about this three show cap increase, like popularity growth increase, we're gonna run three monthly shows. Man, when I when I started this series, it was it was really good. It was really happy, and everything was everything was going relatively well. I would say the first like three episodes, and then we started to get the uh, the popularity increase issue. Were we get were we actually getting it on that first and second episode? I need to go back and watch those because now I now that I think about it. Part of me thinks that we were getting popularity for every show. Maybe I wasn't noticing it. But I think I was. If that makes sense. Like, I think... From what I remember, 
every show we were doing, we were getting popularity. Now, I think, I think we actually did update the game. So maybe something happened when we updated. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it's really, it's kind of stressing me out. I didn't think I'd be stressed out playing local to global. All right, so let's get into this last show of the episode. We'll try another another rib. Uh, let's go another practical joke, and let's go Captain Canada. So he's seeing the funny side, which is good, uh, but unfortunately no increase to the backstage rating. Uh, so the main event for this one, let's go with Topher Smith and Americana. Should be a, a good enough main event without having Marcel involved. Uh, and I guess we'll go with both. Uh, let's go with Americana. Let's go with Americana. Americana is like, like another guy that I do want to keep from this roster. I know a lot of you guys are kind of big fans of him, as am I, to be honest. I mean, he's just, he's got so much upside. He's only 23 years old. He's that good already. Up to 90 basics, 71 psychology as well. Yeah, I mean, I want to keep him, but he's going to have morale issues no matter what. So realistically, that's going to bring down our backstage rating once we do actually go in for our new roster, which will probably be in the next episode, if we're being honest. Okay. Let's book the rest of these matches. Let's go with... Uh, I mean, it really doesn't even matter at this point. Taylor Kidd... And take on Murray. And I guess we'll, we'll give Kid the victory. Probably deserves it more. Definitely deserves it more, if we're honest. Murray doesn't deserve anything. The way he's carried on. And I guess we'll give uh, we'll give Edmund another, another match as well. Purely for the fact that I just like him better than everybody else. To an extent. And he is the other... The other guy that I want to keep on the roster. All right, so there we go. It'll probably be the final, the final roster, or the final show, sorry, for this roster together, I guess. And of course it is also the final show of the episode as well. L like I said, my theory is that it is three shows maximum per month to get, you know, popularity from. So this is essentially our third show. So if we get popularity, I would like to assume that I'm correct. And if we then run a, a next show, our next, our first show of next episode, if we don't gain any popularity from that, I won't be running the pay-per-view for that month. Uh, we'll skip it. Then, like I said, we'll just be running three big monthly events uh, just to maximize the popularity and, of course, to minimize the financial loss which we've been incurring for the last five months. So there we go. Uh, we'll do another angle here. Let's go with another Alexander Robinson angle. So Americana will go in there. Let's go with Alexander Robinson and let's go Spencer again. So unscripted, there we go. That can go there, angles there. Uh, that is storytelling, no it's not. There's our storytelling match, and let's run the show. All right, so we start off with a 42 for the Alexander Robinson, Spencer Edmund angle together. Uh, once again, Americana not doing too well in his road agency. Spencer's match gets a 25, where we have Spencer Edmund defeating Captain Canada in just under 12 minutes by submission with an elevated Boston Crab. Captain Canada seemed off his game. We then go into another 25 rated match where we have Taylor Kidd defeating Murray Firth in 12.30 by pinfall with a 450 degree splash. Yeah, it's a good win there for Taylor. We then go into a 43 rated angle where we have Tofa and Americana uh, essentially going at it with a promo together. Uh, both of them doing well without a script, so I'm happy about that. At least one positive coming out of it. 
And the main event is our best ever match rating. We get a 48 rated main event here with Americana Jr. defeating Topher Smith in 20 minutes, 2 seconds by pinball with an American crush. And we had a 45 for Topher and a 41 for Americana. Really good match. It's going to be sad to potentially... I mean, Topher's really good as well. I mean... It just sucks that we're going to have to let these people go. And I do really like some of them. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, let's finish the show. I am, I am truly, truly gobsmacked. I have absolutely no idea. No idea. Not even in the slightest. We get a 42 overall rating, but the show didn't result in any popularity changes. I just don't know. Like, I'm trying to the, uh, theorize, theorize, I don't even know if that's a word, that's what I'm thinking in my mind right now. I'm trying to come up with a theory as to why we're not gaining the popularity. The only other thing, and I know I've said about 10 different things, is the fact that BMCW have declared war on us, and they are in the same region. I'm not sure if war, I should probably read the handbook, but I'm wondering if war against a company in the same region as you, if that automatically acts as a regional battle. I have no idea. No idea. I guess that's something else I should probably look into. Uh, but I'm really sad that we didn't actually get up to 8 popularity. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It really is. And I, like I said, next episode could be, could be a massive one. I mean, literally everybody on our roster at the moment has morale issues. So in theory, I need to be getting rid of all of them. And like I said, I don't want to do that. Americana, kind of one of my favorites. Really like him. You know, very hot momentum as well. Uh, and then Spencer, really good up-and-comer. Really good up-and-comer. Really good star quality charisma. And he's really good in the ring already. 93 stamina there as well. He's also professional. Oh, it's such a, such a tough thing to, to do. We're $15,000 in debt at the moment as well. It's a dire situation. It really is. And I need your support, guys. If you could smash a like on the video, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, please drop some comments down below. If you can help me, help me out. Because, as you can tell, I really, really need it at the moment. Uh, the local to global its proven to be a real challenge for me. It really is. And maybe I went for the wrong strategy too early. I mean, only now am I now clocking on to the, the whole ticket price thing. Maybe the, the smarter thing to do would have just been to run one or maybe maybe two monthly events with the three tickets. And we would be, well, in theory, we would already be in a same, if not better position than we are now, potentially. If the, the whole popularity thing didn't really matter. And we gained popularity like I thought we were going to gain it. Anyway, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done that. And uh, turn on the notification bell as well. And you'll be notified when these episodes come out. As I'm sure you're all raring and looking forward to next episode. When we completely gut the whole, comp the whole company. And uh, essentially have to start paying for travel. For other workers. And hopefully that'll actually fix our backstage rating. I honestly have no idea if it will. So yeah. Apart from that. Hope you have a great day. As always take it easy. And goodbye.